everyone. Welcome back to the garden. Let's go ahead and start doing stuff. And today I have a lot of things to do. The weather is beautiful still. We are in spring and everything is flourishing. The garden is just such a peaceful, awesome place, but there's a lot of housekeeping. Uh, my stapelia. Since I planted it, I got some cuttings and they took a long time to become big and to start reproducing. They're at that point, but they still have tons of mealybug. They're very susceptible to it, so I'm giving them a bath of a little bit of um, neem oil with um, water. You can also use alcohol and um, a little bit of water and dish soap. And I'm trying both here because this plant is very, very, um, again, susceptible to the mealybug. They just hide in the crevices. And I don't know why, because it's not really getting that much water. And um, it's big enough where it's probably going to start flowering um, maybe this year, hopefully. And as you can see, I'm just using um, an old artist brush to remove that little cotton-like substance it's kind of like marshmallow like melted marshmallow and that's when you know that you have this mealybug and it's just horrible because it I mean it tends to happen in succulent plants and in probably other plants but as you can see it, it kind of like adheres to to your plant and the only way to remove this is to um, actually use a brush and use the alcohol solution with the dish soap and water and um, you can also use soapy um, insecticide but really I've tried everything and it doesn't make too much of a difference still um, you have this situation so um, something also likes eating I think it might be like a lizard or something that likes eating this plant but um, here I'm just using water with my sprayer and um, spraying, kind of trying to wash it off. And that actual um, marshmallow-like substance is not the mealybug. That is just kind of like the residue or the, the excrement that it leaves on the plant. Um, the mealybug actually is a little a bug and um, I have videos on that and there's tons of videos online if you want to go ahead and take a look at that but if you do suspect that you have this bug it I mean for a plant like this the only way to really really um, combat it is to take it out of the ground inspect the roots inspect the whole plant because it likes to hide and um, even though I thought I did a thorough job here um, when I planted this one, I still saw a little bit on it, so I had to go back and clean it. So, yep, here we go. And this is not a beautiful plant. Uh, it's not one of my favorites. And here you can see the difference between something that has plenty of water and something that doesn't. As you can see, the one that is kind of lacking in water or is getting too much sun. And in this case, I think it was too much sun because all of this is the same part of the plant. All right. After um, cleaning this brush with alcohol and water and making sure that um, it didn't have any mealybug, um, I went ahead and um, started on this plant. And this is the Belen. And as you can see, it had some type of a beetle on it. I wonder if this beetle likes to munch on succulents. Anyhow, this beetle is dead, so sorry little beetle. But I wanted to show you my Belen. I've had this one since the beginning almost with the Esmeralda. This is an Echeveria. And this was a gorgeous, gorgeous Echeveria. And she rarely, she's probably had babies that weren't successful one other time. And now she has a baby. But as you can see, she started to rot or dry out or I don't know what the situation is here, but I decided to take her out of the ground, remove all the, the leaves that she had that were not viable and um, 
since the baby has roots coming out from the little arm, I'm going to go ahead and just remove the baby, just snap it off with a little bit of the root. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and plant this baby and hopefully it will become as beautiful and resilient as the mama. The mama, as you can see, she's got a old stump because she, again, she, this one's almost probably four years old. And again, she she reached, she was probably like eight, nine inches in circumference. That's how beautiful and big she was at one point. But for some reason, she just started dying down. And I've been very amazed with these Echeverias because Echeverias are not long, long-lasting um, plants. They, um, again, I've gone through a list. And if you follow my garden channel um, you will see how my garden morphs and change and what I lose and some of these are just there to enjoy temporarily really you have them for a year like the sea dragon echeveria and um, the neon breaker and all those um, plants the um, von Perlberg those don't don't last season after season after season um, here you're looking at the agavoides and the agavoides is a beautiful um, red edge agavoides or red lipstick they call it um, and this one for some reason again um, I believe that the water has been turned on from the hedge on the other side again and it's a non-stop battle with these people and they just don't get it and I'm gonna just have to do something about it I had to remove my my agavoides. They were gorgeous. I mean, they were probably um, probably two, three more inches bigger than this in circumference. Um, as soon as spring hit, they started getting gorgeous. But I noticed that they were yellowing the leaves from the bottom. And yep, too much water. So I had to put them in my um, hospital, succulent hospital, and hopefully that helps them. Um, here you're looking at pictures of where I potted my stapelia and as you can see um, it's it's not a extra beautiful plant but the flower that this one gives is so unique that I'm willing to put up with it and see see where it goes my potting bench again it's doing fantastically I love it I just have a lot of little starts, a lot of little plants that I pull out, some nasturtiums that I planted from seed. And um, I'm just trying to nurse some of these back or they're just little cuttings that need eye level attention. And that's basically um, what I'm using this bench for. And also it has uh, um, an area where I do the potting, which is fantastic. This season I did decide to experiment with growing plants from seeds and I um, ordered a variety pack of these sustainable edible flowers it's just a beautiful variety pack and I planted these bachelor buttons uh, one um, batch in terracotta pots and the other one in a plastic and the plastic one is thriving um, as you can see the terracotta one it's a bit like elongated and it's smaller and the plastic one is doing better so for these plants moisture is the key here you're seeing again my little um, raised bed with the nasturtiums I will be moving those because these like more dappled light and here they're gonna get too much Sun for the heat that's coming all this batch down here also has to be moved because um, again in pots they um, cannot stand too much heat they will dry out and they will suffer the consequences I have a lot of surprises in the garden and this year my apuntias have just given me so much joy because they started to fruit and I have tons of fruits and I um, am working on a separate video to show you more detail on this but um, they have beautiful um, yellow flowers and again when the flower dies out the fruit uh, ripens and I'm looking forward to that. 
here you're taking a look at my gourds and this is how they started out again I didn't plant these from seeds I really don't have space to to really plant these in my garden I'm gonna try them a little bit on in my south side garden but I'm gonna take some to my daughter's house and hopefully um, they'll thrive over there and we'll make like a gourd tunnel and that'll be so exciting for October here you're looking at the Rita and the Rita Apuntia. This one is not edible, um, but it is gorgeous. It, this one has the glockets, kind of like the bunny ears. And as you can see, um, I had this one probably two and a half years for now. Let me see. Yes, I bought it about two and a half years ago. And um, it wasn't doing much. It's been in the ground. It's been in several places. Um, as you can see, it's pretty scarred. Um, by another plant that fell on top of it and I finally decided to put it in a pot and look at it now it is just thriving here you're taking a look at all the puntias these are edible and again I will be posting a video on this um, the next video coming up and um, just to detail on um, all the blooming uh, flowers that I have on these and and kind of the harvest time and these are again just gorgeous all these these little nubs at the top that are kind of um, round these are the fruit and they have not i don't know if it's uh, the maturity level that has to be achieved with these but for some reason this year was the year that i got tons of fruit and um, i'm really enjoying this again i have a video on the fruit because i have had fruit from these before but only a couple and um, I did open one up and show you um, how to do that. Um, here you're looking at the pads. And I've had uh, so many pads to clean. It, it is a pain in the butt. But no pun intended. Um, it can be done and it kind of goes quick. So um, it's not as uh, bad as it seems. And once you do clean them and you... Um, prepare them you can store them in the freezer or you can can them if you want to can them and these will they're just nutritious and delicious and there's many recipes um, in the Latin culture that you can make these or you could just grill them on the grill with a little bit of salt pepper garlic pepper lemon pepper um, and they are delicious um, so this is food in your garden which is always great so next, you're going to be seeing a picture of my beautiful pot um, here. It doesn't have any top dressing yet, but I do have a video, the video before this one, where I went ahead and cut this one down and reset them in the pot. And um, they're doing good. They have no roots, and they're just still doing beautifully. There's been no yellowing. And um, just wanted to show you that one and again here I've mentioned many times that um, hydrangeas are one of my most loved plants that I can never grow because I don't have um, north side uh, dirt where I could put these where they get just the right amount of sunlight um, here it gets too hot for these in the summer so in order for them to survive I had to put them in a pot and they're doing beautifully. The red ruffle lecheveria. This one has escaped my grasp. It is very elongated, but it just looks beautiful still. So um, I haven't cut it and who knows if I'll cut it this season. The aloes and um, the echeverias, these beautiful Saharas are doing so gorgeous these are very tough and they do well in the hot sun but still they need um, care this is a mortillo cactus and this is my cactus that is cresting all by itself who knows why and um, it's doing good i've been monitoring it and um, it is just doing gorgeous this aloe is a little bit too big for this one. I might move this one from the spot, but I wanted to show you the aeoniums, which are waking up and they're gorgeous. 
and again you're seeing the Sahara here I have my hubby bought me two more Saharas and these are the the Saharas they're mid medium size um, I already had one and that one had babies and the babies are doing good on that one too but these are doing gorgeous and as you can see if you like that dusty blue color with the little pink edges um, this is the Echeveria for you and again this one is a keeper it survives many years with you if you care for it right here I'm showing you the Dorothea aloe I thought I had lost this one because at one point it was so hidden in my garden that I didn't know where it was but as you can see here it's very stressed and this is why I think that they turned up the water on the other side because now this is what it looks like and um, it is very green and that's the difference between a plant that is not getting water too much water and a plant that is getting a lot of water and it can also be on the sun that it's getting if this if it's very hot it can turn orange like that but it hasn't been that hot here i wanted to show you my gorgeous gorgeous bloom spikes from my hummingbird aloe these are called hesper aloes and they do look kind of like grasses and these are very easy to care for i love these i have these in pots in front of my house and um, they do great here you're looking at my mexican salvia i went ahead and got another one because i just love it in this spot and i do have a spike here because the kitties like lying in anything that's fresh when it's a hot day and they'll just lie on top of it so i do put a spike in it a uh, wood uh, just a stick to deter them and um, again, you're looking at a close-up of these beautiful, beautiful um, hummingbird loving bloom spikes. And um, the color is just incredible. It's like a neon orange. They just brighten up uh, your garden. So these are uh, a great addition. Very, very hardy. And again, these live years and years, so it's a great investment to make in your garden, and they reproduce. So this is a plant that I definitely recommend. Um, aloes just liven up your garden against those beautiful greens, dusty greens and dusty blues. They just make your garden look so good. The aloe mama here has tons of babies, again, as you can see. I took probably, uh, I probably like 15 or more babies to my daughter's house a year ago and planted them there and they're doing great and now this mama is producing more babies so that's awesome here you have my little vignette uh, my bird bath that um, I just repotted and I've been able to reproduce this aeonium and um this is again one of my faves and i'm so happy that i have it like in four or five pots already my um african candelabra the euphorbias are doing great as you can see they have little petals or leaves at the top which means that they're very happy and here you're looking at the flowers that my hydrangea pushing out and they're just gorgeous i'm so happy about this uh the spiders the webs are incredible this time of year they just get in those little florets and and make a make a mess but um yeah this is one of the latest ones that i've purchased uh this uh, aeonium and it's just gorgeous 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 and um it's been doing great this one they say is one of the most hardy plants and if you can look back a couple of videos you'll see uh, the introduction of this one to my garden so go ahead and subscribe and um, you can kind of follow what my garden does uh, month to month or every year here's some more plants that i planted from seed and they are doing great these chives bachelor buttons i bought some little carrots and um I, here I pretty much have all my little pots, my little nursery of cuttings and pots that I have. Um, and this is another Myrtillo cactus. 
gorgeous, gorgeous. I just love the colors and I love this cactus because it just has those big old spines and you can see them. I mean, I am getting to the age where I sight, you know, I don't want a cactus that has a lot of cactus spikes that are gonna zing you, so. Oh, again here, look at this beautiful, beautiful girl and she's got a bloom spike, so I don't wanna mess with her right now because again, she's gorgeous. Her babies, um, she had a bunch of babies when I bought her, and um, they're doing great. I gave some to my daughter, and they're just uh, almost reaching mama status. My um, swing here is just my sanctuary. I sit here, look at the garden again. If you don't have a ton of space, it doesn't mean that you can't have a glorious little garden. Um, that you can enjoy and go out to and tend and um, even this garden um, even though it's not huge it's a lot of work for me um, especially when you have a bad back and you have issues um, you have to um, wait till people help you or just you know find a solution um, where you can comfortably work and um, in this garden so at this point with the issues from the garden from the water I might have have to uh, make a like a little raised bed here in this area who knows the starry night aloe is just looking fantastic it is you know just thriving it has tons of babies and um, a person uh, left a comment that this was not a starry night and it is um, this the cultivars will name their aloes whatever they want and I have double checked and this one definitely is a starry night it was labeled as a starry night and I am able to purchase it again as a starry night so again the garden is just so beautiful this time of year it's just my happy place and um, this little strip that was nothing before has just become a little oasis a jewel box of succulents and aloes and some cacti and again even though I've limited my cacti now because um, they're they're a plant that you need to uh, be careful with and since I have so many leaves that fall in the fall uh, um, cleaning around them it's it's pretty treacherous so um, I've limited them and just sprinkled them all over my garden and I just love them the ones that I've kept um, I enjoy and I know that I will be able to maintenance and here you're seeing the beautiful combination I do have some weed that I have to clean out and it's just part of the whole show um, right now I'm resting from the leaves that um, fell and um, we've been cleaning and de-weeding and look what I found I found a crest I have never seen this this is on my t-rex aloe and I have never seen a crest on, on an aloe and it's not gorgeous I mean, if I if I'm being honest it's not gorgeous but it is cool to see um, I have a lot of hummingbirds the hummingbirds love 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 the aloe uh, bloom spikes and this little fella uh, knows my routine when I go out and I water my plants in the morning or just inspect the garden it comes out and starts feeding um, and it's just uh, so magical to see these little fellas enjoying my garden. Oh, how beautiful okay well here we are going towards my south side garden and 
it is just looking so beautiful the fire sticks are starting to turn green they're losing that beautiful vibrant orange and yellow color this coral aloe that i put in the ground it got stressed a little bit but as you can see it is starting to turn green from the inside means that it's thriving and it's got a beautiful bloom spike my um eucalyptus is doing great and i wanted to close this video by showing you my beautiful garden in the front i just have a few of the self-watering beds that i brought to the front i planted tomatoes and some herbs some oregano some poppies some spearmint some chives and these have tons of babies i have um some um sweet um uh, mini tomatoes that um, I purchased uh, plants and they are thriving. They have tons of babies which are delicious. I've had a taste of them. But look at these spearmint plants. They're gorgeous. Look at them. Big, big leaves. I've never had such a beautiful crop. They just love this area which gets partial sun. Sun in the morning and then shade in the afternoon which is perfect for these um, herbs and they're right um, in my entry so they're accessible when i'm cooking and i just love them so definitely this place is going to be a place where i keep my herbs in the front um, i can keep an eye on them and the animals insects don't seem to be attacking them which is great here taking another um, look a final look of my garden and um, for the most part it's doing great I don't have the blue chalk sticks. Um, I took them out of my garden because it's just so hard to clean um, with the leaves that fall. And then they, for some reason, with all the water and the issues um, from the other side, they seem to get a lot of uh, aphids. Or and um, I, you know, I just can't control that, and it's 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 too much. So I just took them out and I still have some of them in some pots but it's sad because I used to love the way they used to add some blue to this area but now I have the Saharas which do that and just simplify the whole situation here all right everyone I hope you enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching thank you for subscribing welcome to all the new subscribers please give this video a thumbs up if you would like to help my channel and just help it hopefully circulate a little more and get a little bit more views um, wherever you are I wish you health and happiness so take care of yourself and take care of others all right everyone I will talk to you guys later